All right. Cool. Hey, uh, 365 day devotional, Max Lucado's book, God is with you every day. Yes, you are propped up on speakers. Speakers right on the left side and right side of my bed. So when you're watching a really good movie, sound's coming in. Or if you have to turn it down really low, it sounds really close. It's really cool. 365 day devotional, Max Lucado's book, God is with you every day. So I'll read straight from here, and then I'll probably go to the Scripture, in the Holy Bible, in the Word of God, the NIV version. And then I'll give you some of my insight and tell you a little bit about what happened in my life today. Some stuff that's significant to me that I saw happen. Don't stroll through the swamp. Accept my teachings and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest for your lives. Matthew eleven twenty nine. You're going to regret it. I waved away the warning without turning around. What was there to regret? Everyone else was taking the long way. I took the shortcut. Let the others walk around the water. I wade through it. After all, it was just the Everglades, but water is water, right? Wrong. My newfound Florida friends tried to tell me they were taking me to a picnic. The table sat on the other side of the marsh. The parks department had kindly constructed a bridge by which pedestrians could pass over the marsh. But who needed a bridge? A way to cross. Someone pointed at the sign. Swamp water not recommended for recreation. I couldn't be slowed by a warning, so I ventured in. The mud swallowed my feet. The brine was home to a million mosquitoes. Squiggly things swam past me. I think I saw a set of eyeballs peering in my direction. I backpedaled. Both flip-flops were sucked into the abyss, never to be seen again. I exited mud-covered, mosquito-bitten, and red-faced. I walked over the bridge and took my seat at the picnic table. Made for a miserable picnic. Makes for an apt proverb. Life comes with voices. Voices lead to choices, and choices have consequences. Accept my teachings and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest for your lives. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Let's see what Matthew eleven twenty nine is saying. Oh boy. Jesus and John the Baptist. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor. Hmm. And the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you get out <laughs> into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth. Among those born of women... There has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forcefully men laying hold of it. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He who has ears, let him hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang in a dirge and you did not mourn. 
For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. Woe on unrepentant cities. Now, let's go to rest for the weary. We're going to go to uh, Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And those whom the Son chooses to reveal him, Ooh, very good. And those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is Matthew eleven twenty eight. that last part. Very popular scripture. Scripture did. Always remember. Oh, it's for reasons like that and truths like that and promises like that and things that Jesus have said that are one of the small, small, huge actually, huge one of the many reasons that one of us uh, that people come to christ or surrender they say just like uh yeah they pretty much are like totally surrendered if that's true and what the bible says okay <laughs> this sounds uh too good to be true and it's totally free if i surrender and believe it's kind of cool yeah so matthew 11 right there uh let's see usually it happens if we're patient, it happens in the last part of the week, or we pray about something that happens right at the last moment. I see this happening too at at work, I guess. Um, in the last hour, in the last hour is sometimes when the most happens. Let's say it's probably uh, it was more around eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. I, th I my sister in Christ, I think, was being tested, testing of her faith. And I don't think she was very bold. I went over there and any time that I see this person talking to this person, the non-Christian person talking to the Christian person, a, a younger, beautiful girl, um, very intelligent in some ways, and maybe very naive in other ways. But uh, I just went over there to check it out, acted like I was doing something else, which I was really doing something else. Uh, but um, she was having the testing of her faith. And she didn't tell why. She didn't give an account of her faith when she was asked. The person was asking, well, why do you do this? Why do you do that? And she was kind of tiptoeing around the real answer. I don't know if I was bold enough. We're called to be bold. And um, God's watching us. And we shouldn't have a spirit of fear, right? And she didn't say why. And I didn't turn to her or turn to the guy and say, hey, man. You know she loves Jesus and believes all the word of God, right? And that she was, uh, we were worshiping together this weekend, right? Or, or just the first part's good. You know she believed in Jesus, right? Or what happened on the cross and the resurrection, right? You knew that, right? Okay, because if you knew that, you wouldn't be asking her why, uh, really. But just like Satan tested Jesus in the desert, but Jesus said why. He said because because my father says, because the word of God says. And she should have said that, maybe. I, I made it and should have said something. Or my other friend said I should just pray for her and pray for that situation. And I don't know. I don't know. But I will do that because prayer is super important and super powerful. So pray for your friends and your family and your co-workers, like I always say. And pray in situations like that. But remain patient and calm and full of love. Do everything gracefully. Grace. Show grace, right? So I think it's possible that we were both showing grace. But you got to so show a certain amount of boldness at the same time. So I always remember John 10.10 10 and 1 Peter 5.8. I shared those with her weeks, months ago now, and um, 
I think some people might be kind of spiritually blind, might be still Christians, but spiritually blind. You can tell them or show them directly the Word of God, what it says, and they can go, okay, I don't believe it that way, or I don't gr agree with that. It's just the, the enemy, the devil, is here to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay, got it. I mean, the, the lion goes around looking for somebody to devour, right? Okay, good. So remember that stuff, right? And the lion and the devil come in all shapes and sizes. The enemy will. And, uh, yeah, so you have to be on the lookout for that. Because you're going to be tested on your faith. And the demons want to test you on your faith. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to test you. I made mention of that where last night where he don't care. You can go to church. I don't care. You can read the Bible. But if it doesn't go to the heart, if it doesn't pierce your heart, and if it doesn't transform your mind... You don't live out your life in faith of what Jesus did in God and what they are doing in your life, and, and it doesn't really matter, right? So, so yeah, stuff like that. So that makes it more interesting. But boldness is key. But uh, it's not necessarily, it's very, you got to be very intelligent about it. They're going to know us by our love. They're going to see us by our light and by our fruit. And but a certain amount of boldness or rebuking, rebuking the enemy. Um, but if I had to read something and reiterate what I closed with, um, it would probably be this. And this might blow your mind, and it might not. John twenty one fifteen. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said to this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. So remember that. All he does is said, feed my lambs and take care of my sheep. You know? <laughs> you know that I love you and feed my sheep. That's it. So who's the sheep? We are the sheep. But some of us have a uh, greater foundation in Christ and um, experienced more or seen more. Uh, or just more, more teachings. We, we've studied it more and we're there to be protectors or to be shepherds, to really be shepherds. We're still sheep in some situations because uh, the enemy will still come at us in different ways, smarter ways. Um, so we have to be on the lookout, but um, some of us can see it coming from a mile away because we might know the word of God or know this isn't from God or we kind of see what's happening. But we see those, when I see those things, I'm like, all right, all right, God's going to use this for good then. We're going to make turn this around and God's going to use it for good to glorify Him and His kingdom and His Son. So cool, right? Hmm. So take care of His sheep. You know, they're all the sheep. We have to take care of each other. You know, because the evil, the devil, is there to kill, steal, and destroy. He just wants to get his hands on you. That's all. Just a little bit of hands on you and nudge his way in. So... Don't let that happen. So save the drama for your mama. Keep that away from you. Be careful with the people that you keep around you. And stay so focused. So focused. And be ready to give an account in why you believe in Jesus and what happened on the cross and the resurrection. And and the ascension after that, you know, the witnessing to hundreds of people after that and to the disciples. Be prepared to give an account. Yes, because I believe in all that, and I believe in the Word of God and all the truths and promises, what it says, and everything 
uh, that Jesus said, and it's God breathed. Everything, every word is from God. So <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's nice that we have a book like that. That it makes it so simple. So it's cool. And we also have Google. You can Google stuff really quick and find the answer to step. Uh, Google learns what you search. And as soon as I Google something, if I forget like a scripture, I start typing it and it already knows what I'm about to type. And it already knows the first one comes up to a, a Bible app that I use all the time. It's pretty amazing. But to close, take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. That's all. That's all. And uh, actually always closing with the first two commandments. Love God, right? And love people. Love your neighbor as yourself. Get those two right. Uh, incredible. Incredibly simple. And remember Jesus died for us. Remember John 3.16. Jesus died on the cross for us, you know? So we will not perish but have eternal life. Everlasting life, you know? We can be saved through that. And we're cleansed of all sins and all regrets for those of us that believe and surrender and make Him the Lord of our life. It's kind of cool. It's very cool. It's the, like I always say, it's the best relationship you can have. It's the best investment that you can have. Number one investment. So, I think last week, I see a lot of this, just to put it out there. Pursue God and His kingdom first. Pursue God and His kingdom first. And everything else will be added on to you. So, Try not to make plans of your own and start pursuing things that might make potential income. Uh, you pray about it and pursue God first, and then that will just happen the right way. So, uh, especially with Christians, um, Christians should be pursuing God first and be in prayer about that stuff. So, I want to make sure I tell a certain person about that. Uh, two people the person I talked to tonight and somebody on the team. So, uh, it's important. All right? Pursue God and His kingdom first. And, uh, yeah. Ask and it will be given. Knock and it will be opened. Ask anything in my name, I will give it to you. It's pretty cool. What do we got? Uh-oh. We got to go. Love you guys. 17 minutes, 40 seconds. That was pretty good. Love you. Bye.